Um, sure. Wait, hang on. Let me check my hair. <laughs> I actually got a new light. I got a light. <laughs> so, anyway. Lighting is everything, honestly. Yes. <laughs> Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, I'll start with a few AIA announcements. Mainly the uh, awards gala is this um, Friday. And Andrea, if you want to speak a little bit about that. So the gala is going to air on Friday at 5 p.m. It's, you know, going to be an awesome event. We have a keynote by our lead juror, Jim Barnes, of, who's a principal at Foster and Partners. It's a really great presentation. He's going to show us some projects that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get your eyes on. So it's definitely encourage you to tune in. It's free and available to everyone. It's just going to air on the AIA Jacksonville YouTube web uh, page. And so that's at five. And for the hour before that, we're going to have a fun, happy hour social on Zoom, the link of which is sent out in the AIA eblast. E and um, Andrew, you can put it in the chat message too. All right, definitely will do. It's going to be a fun time and uh, please join us. Okay, so that's this Friday. We also have our annual golf tournament. Since it's outdoors, it's the one event we can do. That's November 7th. So you can email me for more information. And without further ado, I will turn it over to Nancy and um, Frank. Um, to talk about the UF City Lab project in Jacksonville. Uh, Brandon, would you check and make sure that uh, I can share my screen? You may have to give me permission. Okay, let me go to participants. Actually, if you just go to the share screen button at the bottom, the, the green one. Yeah. There's a little up arrow and you go to advanced. Yep. If you just go to, okay, well, it's letting me do it. So never mind. <laughs> okay. Well, there, but before we do that, let me, uh, I think you know everybody. I want to thank you for inviting us to uh, talk about the Jacksonville City Lab. And uh, some of you know Nancy Clark. Nancy Clark is the program director for uh, the sustainability uh, degrees, master's degrees that we offer. And uh, she's also the co-director of the Center for Hydro Generated Urbanism. And she'll talk to you a little bit about that uh, later. And Michael Montoya, who, where do you go? Well, he was here and he disappeared. Oh, there you are, Michael. No, I'm here. Uh, and Michael Montoya. Michael, uh, Michael has has generously agreed to be the liaison for us to the professional community because he knows you. So that any kinds of questions that you may have about that or information you want to get to us, you can call any of us or talk to Michael, and Michael will will pass it along. So. I'm going to share my screen here. Let's... Okay, so are you all seeing the intro slide from from me? It says City Lab Jacksonville. Looks good. Is that good? Okay. So um, let me begin by reminding and updating all of you who are who, who, who are part of the UF uh, School of Architecture community about really what we do and who we are. So we're in the College of, of Design, Construction, and Planning, and there are five programs. There's uh, the architecture program, building construction, interior design, landscape architecture, and urban and regional planning. Um, in the School of Architecture, we have 36 faculty and five staff, 547 students. We're just about a third of the total student uh, 
uh, population in the college. Of that 547, 400 are undergraduates, uh, which is 73% of the total school enrollment and 147 graduate students. Uh, on main campus, there are 67, and at City Lab in Orlando, there are 80. So there, and that there are in, on main campus, there are 60 architecture students and seven MSAS. And in, at City Lab, there are 60, that's what we're, we can't have more than 60 architecture students there. And uh, we have a new program, a Master of Science in Architectural Studies in Themed Environments Integration, which was an, a degree that was, was requested by, by industry. Uh, so I thought it would be useful to talk about what a city lab actually uh, actually is that first of all they are self-funded programs meaning that city labs do not receive any state funding they're funded entirely through donations and uh, tuition uh, that the city lab in Orlando is also classified as a market rate program. And uh, that was part of a, uh, an idea that came out of the Board of Governors, I think around 2009, which was to allow uh, these programs to raise and lower tuition, essentially based on the market rate in their, uh, in their communities. Since they've done that, they in fact have revoked that and we're not allowed to raise tuition at all other than what we started with. So City Lab Orlando uh, started in the fall of 2012. Uh, it's a self-funded market rate program with 80 students. We began with an enrollment of 16 uh, and we started in a facility that was owned by UCF, we have uh, an agreement with them as part of what we call the two plus two plus two program, uh, which constitutes the architecture pro professional architecture program in the city of Orlando. So students go to school two years to Valencia College, two years to the University of Central Florida, and then uh, they make application to uh, the Master of Architecture program, and uh, if they, if their applications are sufficiently strong, they're admitted to the City Lab program. We also have uh, a City Lab uh, Sarasota program that was started in the fall of 2013. That. For a variety of, of reasons that we're no longer eligible to offer face-to-face -face classes at Sarasota. So it was, it was um, changed to a self-funded hybrid online program that uh, later on when I talk about what we're proposing for Jack's Lab, that this is essentially the program that we will begin offering there. Uh, and that because it exists, it enables us to actually move very quickly if in fact that's what the professional community uh, would like to do. So we, we have a very, very specific um, mission that, that has to do with really preparing our graduates to be leaders and collaborators. Uh, innovative designers that's building on the long history of design in the School of Architecture, uh, problem solvers and uh, critical thinkers and grounded researchers that, as most of you know, that research is becoming a more and more important part of, um, of, of what we do and that uh, 
part of this uh, that we are that that is happening at the School of Architecture is the Center for Hydro Generated Urbanism, and Nancy's going to tell you a little bit about that. Thanks, Frank. So, as Frank mentioned, I direct CHU together with Martha Cohen, and our center is focused on um, sustainable development and adaptation of water-based cities. Um, we're engaged in a number of activities, including organizing public events, such as symposia and conferences. A recent activity is um, Puerto Rico Restart. Um, we also are working on sponsored studies and grants, and um, I'm happy to talk to you guys about some of that. We're actually trying to put a, together a NOAA grant um, through the college centers, including CHU um, for for Jacksonville, actually. Um, and then, of course, we have academic courses um, that we, we involve students. Well, we really involve students in, in all aspects because we have an educational mission in the center um, through the students. Um, so, of course, we're excited about CHU um, having some sort of a long-term presence in Jacksonville. It makes a lot of sense given the strong intersection between the natural and built environment in Jacksonville, as well as um, given how much the presence of water has shaped the city um, and will continue to shape the city moving forward. So we really feel like it's a, it's a nice fit and we're excited about bringing that kind of research um, and starting to collaborate with you guys and um, other sort of stakeholders and decision makers in the city. Um, I would just say that Frank and I um, are both, as a kind of pilot project, both teaching an advanced graduate design studio um, it, with Jacksonville as a context. And of course, there's been a lot of Mike's taught courses in Jacksonville. Um, we've been doing it over the years, but we're really trying to think about longer term relationships. So one of the pieces that CHU sponsored as a part of this course is um, the city seminar series. And this year we're, we're um, looking at Jacksonville. So we've already invited, um, started inviting and hosting um, people from Jacksonville, Randy DeFore, who's the chair of the special committee on resilience and Kate Moorhead, of course, you know, she's representing the cathedral district. And we were working on getting some of you guys to, to participate in the, in the event. This semester, we have a couple already slated, um, and then next semester as well. So I'll keep in touch with you about that. Um, and anyway, um, we just really feel like through the seminar series, we're getting positive feedback on the City Lab idea. Um, and I'll turn it back over to Frank. Frank, you're muted. Yeah, my students wish they could mute me all the time. So, uh, <laughs> oh. consider yourself fortunate. Uh, so, Jack Slab, that's what we're sort of nicknaming the Jacksonville City Lab. And, and that we, we see it essentially as having two really important functions. One is that building capacity um, in the city of Jacksonville with some of the really important issues that you're dealing with that have to do in particular with uh, resiliency and um, the issues that, that essentially are affecting you from sea level rise and climate change. The, the second thing is our primary mission, which is about educating architects. Um, that when we started the City Lab in, in Orlando, a significant mission of ours was to assist individuals who had finished their four-year degrees and were in the workplace to, in fact, finish their advanced degree program and become registered. Um, and we've, about half of our students in, in Orlando are from that particular group of people. Uh, 
but we in we have a sort of bigger vision for what we might do in Jacksonville, which is that it's a it, it's a multidisciplinary program. We would like to engage some of the other units in the college um, because we think that contemporary practice really is about collaboration, and and that this all of our city labs have a kind of uh, focus associated with it. And here we're trying to focus on this idea of the intersection of the natural and constructed environment. But Jacksonville as a physical place is uh, an, an outstanding example of, of what this might be. So these are some ideas about what our initial program of study will be, that uh, we'll have a Master of Architecture degree and that our goal would be to have both the two-year advanced MARC and our four-year core program, which is for individuals who uh, do not have uh, a previous pre-professional degree. The, the Master of Science uh, in Sustainable Architecture, which is a 36 credit course that focuses on sustainability and regenerative practices. That program is only available to individuals already holding professional degrees. Um, that that we're, we're interested in, in hopefully helping you build uh, capacity in your individual offices in the area of sustainability and regenerative practices. Uh, we also have um, a sustainable architecture certificate and that program is only available to students who are enrolled in the Master of Architecture degree program so that it's possible to gain both uh, a major in sustainable architecture at the same time you're earning your Master of Architecture degree. Uh, the, the fourth degree is the Master of Science in Sustainable Design, which focuses on sustainable urban practices. This degree is open to anyone that has a bachelor's degree and that is interested in, in the program. Uh, and then the final degree that we offer, and we don't have too many students who take advantage of this, but it's called the planned program. So if someone has a very particular research project that they're working on that they feel that that uh, additional degree program would assist them, that's what this program is for. So I'm quickly just going to go through uh, what the Master of Architecture program is. Uh, most of you are familiar with this, but we have three curricular tracks in the Master of Architecture program. The first is our uh, accredited advanced Master of Architecture degree. Uh, the second is our core architecture degree for, for individuals interested in architecture that do not come with pre-professional degrees. And we have uh, another track for individuals who have a five-year Bachelor of Architecture degree and are looking to get a master's. Uh, we recently have not had very many students in that particular program. So sort of to quickly remind you about what um, what the core program is, that it consists of 48 credit hours of what we call leveling courses um, that prepare a student to enter the advanced Master of Architecture degree program along with uh, students that have pre-professional degrees. And so that, as you can see, half of that particular foundation work is in studio and they study digital architecture, environmental technology, 
history and theory, materials and methods and structures. And that um, after they after they do that, then they enter the advanced master of architecture program. This is also the program that our four year graduates from our um, uh, bachelor of design program enter as well as uh, candidates or applicants from any other uh, uh, pre-professional program uh, in the world. Uh, and that this is a 52 credit program in order to be accepted, you have to have a pre-professional degree or you must be a graduate of our core foundation program. And that in, in this case, there are three studios, uh, advanced structures, uh, advanced history and theory, professional practice, um, research methods and a project in lieu of thesis, which is the MRP which is a total of 12 credit hours and 12 credit hours of, of electives. Um, actually, the photograph that's on this slide is a photograph of the gallery at uh, City Lab in Orlando. Uh, the one part of our program which um, distinguishes City Lab from many other programs in the United States is the IPAL program. Some of you may in fact be be familiar with this, but uh, I'm going to take just a moment and review what it is. Uh, we are one of 21 uh, programs in the United States that are certified by NCARB to offer the integrated path to architectural licensure. Um, this particular program allow students to complete the AXP and the registration exam simultaneously while they're taking their degree program. Uh, if students successfully complete all of those things, they pass all six parts of the exam and complete their AXP, uh, they are eligible to be registered upon graduation. But generally speaking, that's about a month after they graduate. Uh, this is extremely challenging. Uh, we, we were fortunate to graduate the first three IPAL graduates in the United States. Uh, we graduated the first woman uh, in, in Florida and we've just recently graduated uh, an IPAL graduate who was in the core program uh, who, who, who essentially started from zero four years ago and graduated uh, as a registered architect. And that this is part of NCARB's initiative to shorten the amount of time that it takes for uh, entrance into the profession to become registered. That particular time right now is 6.7 years following graduation. So I'm going to let Nancy take over this part, which is about our non-professional degree programs and graduate certificates. So just a little history, the uh, Master of Science in Architectural Studies was approved as a degree um, in 1989. And so over the years, we've establish research areas. Um, and those are listed down towards the bottom. Um, Frank already mentioned sustainable architecture, sustainable urban design. Of course, acoustics was one of the first concentrations. A newer one is the themed environments integration. Um, and then the italicized two are in progress. So those are under development, but are going to be very important computation design and community design. Um, it's the MSAS is typically uh, two years to complete. You can complete it sooner, um, but it really, usually this is for, especially in the self-funded programs for students who are also continuing to work. So there's a little different pace in terms of the number of credit hours they want to take. 
Um, but total, uh, the, the standalones are 32 to 36 credits. You can change the slide. Um, so the concentration and sustainability, there's two um, possibilities. There's the standalone, which is a 36 credit um, uh, concentration in sustainability. And then there's also a certificate and that's usually accomplished alongside and um, at the same time as the advanced MARC degree um, program. You can change the slide. So for the sustainability, there's really two uh, focus areas um, as tracks. There's the sustainable architecture, which is really focused on advanced building science and building technologies and regenerative design practices. Um, in order to get the sustainable architecture concentration or certificate, you have to either be on your way to getting your degree in architecture or you already have a, a, a master's degree in architecture or a bachelor's five-year degree in architecture. Um, and then for those um, candidates who don't want to practice architecture but are interested in sustainability, we have the sustainable urban design. And that's really an emphasis on resilient communities and cities um, and the impact of sustainable policy and development and planning. Um, you can change the slide. So I, I just, um, I won't go into too much detail, but this kind of helps you see how the curriculum plays out. This is an example of the standalone um, concentration in sustainability. Um, I would imagine, again, someone who either already has their um, professional degree in architecture that might want to come back and get a higher level of expertise in sustainability um, might, might um, uh, apply for this program. Or it could be someone who has a bachelor's degree in architecture or in design or something else that doesn't want to practice, but that does want to sort of uh, be involved in sustainability within their career. Um, and we have uh, three core courses that are, are common, whether you're doing the sustainable architecture or sustainable urban design. And, um, and then there's sort of nine credits where you have your focus area elective. And examples of the focus area electives, um, let's see, where's my paper? Um, include um, data modeling in the city, public policy and the economics of sustainability in the built environment, resilient cities, or um, advanced BIM, which would be a very high level of environmental performance modeling. Um, and then there's a sustainability studio. And of course, a part of this is you have to ha do an MRP or master's research project that involves sustainability. You can go to the next. And then this is the, the track where you're getting a certificate in sustainable sustainability while you're doing your two year MARC. Um, and so we sort of weave the, the sustainability courses that are required into the existing curriculum for the MARC. And again, you can see the three core courses that happen in the fall. Um, and then uh, in this case, this is an example of uh, the sustainable architecture where they would have to take the environmental performance tools modeling course. Um, and then there's an opportunity to do a sustainability studio in the summer or um, with, with the fall, in the fall. You can change. Oh, I think that's it. Okay. Well, what we really want to know, and we can talk about it after this, is do you see I mean, for us, it makes a lot of sense to run and emphasize the sustainability master of science and architectural studies in Jacksonville for the same reasons that I talked about with CHU, just the natural and built environment and the presence of, uh, and the need to really start to think about sustainability and, and resilience in Jacksonville. So we, we want some feedback about um, interest uh, within the profession for this degree. And with that, I'll give it back to Frank. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what it, 
what it actually takes to put together uh, a city lab. So city labs really operate at their peak when they're fully integrated into the professional community. But um, when our, our graduates participate in the, in the AIA and work with us on, on various kinds of programs that there are partnerships with us about providing internship opportunities for our IPAL students. And then uh, in, in Orlando, we, have, uh, we, we open our gallery for local firms to make presentations, do interview days, and all of those kinds of things. That, that our, our goal in, in the City Lab with the IPAL program is to focus on uh, becoming a registered architect rather than just graduating from school. And so students operate at their own pace because they're working on their AXP and other things. And then in order to do that, this is the stuff that we actually need. Uh, and the most important is a consistent and reliable source of applicants for the program. And uh, at uh, at, at our, our Orlando City Lab, part of that is taken up by our relationship with the 2 plus 2 plus 2 program. But we don't really have anything quite like that in Jacksonville, so this is something that we, we need to talk about. Where will the students come from? Uh, we need a physical space for the school, and at, at this particular time, Kate has uh, extended an offer to give us some space in the cathedral to get started with, um, and that that for the first couple of years that will be at no cost. Uh, we need startup funding, and I'll tell you more about that uh, in a few minutes. Um, we need to develop this strong relationship I was talking about with the AIA chapter, and that's where Michael. Uh, Montoya comes in, that we need to develop a relationship with the city government, uh, that we, we can't do that very well without um, all of you sort of running interference for us and getting us to the right, the right people, that we're, we're interested in becoming an integral part of what happens in the city, that, uh, and then finally, uh, to offer us internships for our IPAL students. To give you an idea of, of the impact that we've, we've graduated uh, 80 students in Orlando, and of that 80 students, 75 are still in Orlando or the immediate region. And that uh, that particular relationship has um, been important. So what do we do? Well, we, on our side of this, we have to build all the curriculum and programs and that, that we're in, in very good shape there uh, because these programs exist and the next part, university approvals, the the approvals that we'll need are, are done relatively quickly and easily because it's just about approving another remote location for teaching. Uh, we have to appoint a program director. Um, we have to begin student recruiting. Uh, we build a financial model and secure space for the school. Um, that requires designing, actually designing the school space, purchasing furniture and equipment, all while at the same time we're, we're, visiting, uh, we're visiting firms and community groups to try to solidify our relationships. Um, we actually set up the physical space. We establish advisory board and we begin to develop scholarships for the students. Uh, and we're, we're trying to target an opening for fall of 2021. And as you can see, there's a lot to do uh, before we do that. 
So uh, I worked out a kind of phasing plan about how we might actually accomplish this here. That, uh, and I'm going to show you three phases, which will take us through uh, six years. So in, in the first year, we would be recruiting cohorts of 10 students for both the advanced Master of Architecture program and the Master of Science uh, programs. And in order to do that, we have to have studio space for 20 students and ancillary space for uh, the, the equipment that students use and an office for the director. Um, we would be teaching face-to-face -face studios in Jacksonville and all of the other courses at this point uh, in the development would be online from Orlando, which is, which would be teaching exactly the same courses that you have here. And that, that CHU would begin working in Jacksonville. Uh, Nancy and I talked about this. We can't really give you very much accurate information about where that would lead, but uh, the, the Center for Hydrogenerated Urbanism is, uh, is central to the work of the, the Master of Science program. And we see it as critical in the Master of Architecture program because of the focus that we intend to have. Um, just so that you know that the, the studios that we do in the city labs are all essentially in the city that the city lab is located in. That, that the work we're doing in Jacksonville is the first time that uh, City Lab Orlando has actually worked outside of our sort of designated community. And we do that because of the kind of collective knowledge that we build and it really helps us with the kind of wicked problems that we're we're dealing with in in cities right now uh, in year two we uh, increase the advanced master of architecture program to 20 students and 20 students in the master of science program so that means that that there is a full cohort of students in the first year of the mark and the second year and the same is true for the Master of Science, full cohort in the first year and second year. Uh, I don't think I need necessarily to read all of this, but we require more studio space and, and some more room when we move to that point, that most of our courses would be, would be offered online with the exception of studios and seminar courses that, that basically emanate from Jacksonville. In other words, the courses are focused on the things that happen in Jacksonville. So we would we would teach them from Jacksonville to other locations and that CHU just continues working. So in phase two, which is from the fall of 2023 to the summer of 2025, we're still in a building mode that we would begin uh, our first group of core students, which would be 10 students. And we would increase the recruiting number for MSAS to a cohort of 15, which we think is probably the ideal uh, size going forward. Could be a little bit larger, could be a little smaller. We don't really know quite yet. Uh, this really increases the need for studio space. Um, so by year three, we're up to uh, the requirement for 40, 40 desks and some other space that once again, all of the studio teaching will be at Jack's lab and and some seminar courses that have as a focus their, uh, uh, their work at Jacksonville. And hopefully by phase two, uh, CHU has a has a permanent workspace in Jacksonville and are beginning to work on problems, perhaps in concert with the city or the county on the regional problems right now with uh, with resiliency. So in year four, 
we have the core enrollment filled in both the first year and the second year, and we maintain a enrollment of 20 students in the Master of Architecture program. And we have a full enrollment in the Master of Science students. That takes us to a requirement for 55 seats in the studio space. And then finally, in, in uh, phase three, that the, the core students that we have are beginning to move into the Master of Architecture uh, programs so that we recruit 10 students from outside of our own program and we uh, elevate 10 of our own core students, uh, which basically takes us to a requirement for 65 seats. And then finally in year six, we've achieved complete and total enrollment, maximum enrollment in all of the programs, which would be uh, 60 students in the, in the Master of Architecture program and 30 students in the MSAS. That means we have a requirement for a studio space of 75, plus all the equipment that's associated with it. Um, in, in the city labs, we we tend not to segregate our studios, that we like everyone in the same place. We think of it more as a kind of collaborative office environment, maybe than you might think of as a school, uh, traditional school. So these are the startup costs that, that uh, we would need to hire a director and that person's salary and benefits is about $160,000. We don't have any rent, uh, so we don't have any design fees for setting up uh, construction. Uh, there will need to be some construction in the, in the uh, cathedral space that some walls have to be taken out and some other things put in. So I don't really know whether $50,000 is an, uh, an accurate estimate, but based on what I think the work is, that's probably pretty close. Uh, there'd be another 50,000 for furniture and equipment. That's desks, uh, plotters, laser cutters, 3D printers, furniture for the director's office. Uh, we need 5,000, basically we need $5,000 a year going on for recruiting. Uh, but it costs about $10,000 a year for supplies. That's for plotter paper and filament for the 3D printers. We don't charge students anything for using the equipment or, or plotting. So the estimated startup cost is about $275,000 and that that's the amount of money that we, we, we need to raise right away in order to make this happen. Uh, for reference, our, our tuition at the self-funded programs is $750 a credit hour. That's about $125 a credit hour higher for, than on main campus for residents and uh, about $800 a credit hour less for for non-residents. We don't distinguish. And then finally, I thought I would just give you an example of to, to build out from scratch uh, a city lab facility like Orlando, which is in, in the end, the same size facility that would be in Jacksonville, is that the cost of this is a little over a half a million dollars to, to actually do all of it. And and that we, we had to raise quite a bit of money in, in Orlando. Uh, we made a lot of negotiations with the, the leaseholder to pay for all of the expenses. And so anyway, it was challenging, but we managed to get, to get through it. So that's the, that's the end of the formal presentation and we're ready for questions.
I guess one of my questions is where you're hoping to get this money from. Like, are you hoping firms in the area help sponsor it? Uh, yes, firms uh, and, and and that there are um, some other, for example, the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund might be interested in funding part of this that um, I don't know all of the potential sources in Jacksonville yet, but the, the professional community uh, I, usually has to be a significant contributor in, in terms of getting the thing started. And that, that, that's always challenging. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, well, that was easy. I had another question. Um, you guys were talking about sustainability of the matches. Can you tell me a little bit about the difference between that okay. one and the City Lab and the UFDCP sustainable design? I think you guys have one as well on campus. We do. Um, uh, Frank, he's asking about the sustainability and the Singapore program. Um, the, the Singapore program is the sustainable design and it's one of the possible tracks. Um, it's very specific, um, to Gainesville. It's, it, you could, it's an online course, really. It's an online, um, degree. So you can take that anywhere and that could be a possibility, um, in Jacksonville, but it's not really focused on Jacksonville. And our idea is that, um, the MSAS sustainability um, in Jacksonville would really be focused on Jacksonville as its context primarily. Um, and there's different, and because of that, there are actually different core courses uh, between the Singapore program and um, our MSAS um, that we're planning for City Lab. Okay, a follow-up question for the City Lab, would that be more face-to-face -face or would that kind of also be um, online? I know that you guys showed a, a quick schedule but it looked like studios were face to face, but everything else was. Right. No, well, idea. I'll answer it and then Frank, go ahead. Yeah. Um, ideally, our, we're aiming towards having it uh, face to face. I think it's the it's a it's a bet with maybe some select courses being taught online, but the large percentage eventually would be taught face to face. I, I think what you were, may have been looking at is just to to jumpstart the program, we may have to teach some of it out of Orlando. Frank, you can follow up on that. Yeah, the, the, uh, the program in Orlando actually has, has set up its facility to um, teach uh, remotely. And so we have good facilities for doing that. Uh, and that one of our goals was depending on the kind of resources that are available, that it's a way to um, begin these programs without a lot of uh, additional costs involved in both facilities and instruction. Um, the, the goal of, well, a lot of it depends on what as a professional community you actually want to have happen there. But um, as as we become more and more focused on um, Jacksonville as a place that 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 we're studying, then more and more courses will be taught there in person. Um, I think someone had a question about the existing sustainability program uh, in DCP. That is uh, an undergraduate program, and. Oh, okay. And that um, whether or not they they take advantage of of uh, continuing in our master's program with a with a specific focus in in architecture uh, is really up to them. It's not there. We're not part of that program. Thank you, Frank. This, Frank, this is Mike Thompson. I have a question for you about. Uh, what your, um, uh, I guess, go, no go date might be for fundraising. So you mentioned seeing students in the fall of 21. 
uh, at what point do you decide you don't have enough funding to start prep classes? Ah, a question <laughs> I did not anticipate. Uh, <laughs> so the, the, the ideal situation is to have the, the director of the program in place as early uh, next year as possible so that they can get located in Jacksonville and begin to do all the other work that's necessary. So the, the first part of it is finding funding for, uh, for the director's salary is the most important and that really needs to be done by February. Uh, the other fundraising, those costs are generally related to the start of, of instruction which would be uh, in the following fall. So if you, if, if you want to shoot for an opening date of the fall of 2021, then basically the fundraising needs to be done by the beginning of summer 2021. Very good, thanks. Yeah. So Frank, I, uh, I like the uh question about pipeline for students and I heard that you mentioned that you had a 222 which uh, is very intriguing to me could something like that be done here in Jacksonville has there been any discussion with uh, Florida State College of Jacksonville or University of North Florida as being participants in this program um, actually we have not done that and I let me get down here I actually have a slide about that anticipating that this might be a question so let me explain how this works. That um, in, at the time this was set up, Valencia was not a state college yet, so they couldn't offer four-year degrees. So they had a long-standing two-year program in uh, architecture, and then uh, most of them at that time transferred to UF to finish their undergraduate degree and then go into the graduate program. What happened in Orlando is that the professional community felt that the best talent was being lost to other places and that they needed their own own program. And so that's the origin of this. So they convinced the University of Central Florida to create a, uh, a degree program that essentially consisted of the final two years of the four year Bachelor of Design degree. And, and then those students uh, are uh, applied to the graduate program at City Lab Orlando. So to do something like this in, in in Jacksonville, um, we would have to find an institution that was interested in in developing the the first two years of uh, an undergraduate program in architecture, uh, and um, and we would begin to articulate that into uh, the city lab. That. I suspect that that will be difficult to do at, right now because of both budgetary issues and other things like that, that we are more likely to be able to develop partnerships uh, relating to the Master of Science program. But we certainly will look into this. Uh, what, what, we were, what we were hoping for is that within the professional community, you have enough um, people who are working and who need their professional degree that will allow us to get the program started. That's essentially how we see it happening here. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, that explanation. Sure. It makes a lot of sense when you recognize that we do not have the first two and two established here in Jacksonville, so it would make more sense to focus on something more achievable like you just mentioned? Well, Nancy and I have talked about this at some, some length and, and that we, 
we historically have tried to recruit into the advanced master's degree program, the two-year program. We think, however, that we might be able to articulate students from uh, who finish their bachelor's degrees in other subject areas to come to City Lab Jacksonville, and that we would really focus on on the culture of the place being one where we're taking people from a variety of different disciplines into the program that are interested in becoming architects. Um, that's not that's not easy either, but we actually think because of the number of of uh, of colleges in in the city that that it's a practical solution that will work. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you for your excellent presentation today. Um, I, my name is Francesca Arnold. I'm actually a student at UNF for construction management. Uh -huh. um, and I've done some internships with some architects here in town and they connected me to this meeting um, because I was looking to do a master's in architecture at UF. And I've had a lot of conversations with students in the construction management school who were saying that they wanted to do an architecture master's. So, I mean, I definitely believe there's a pool of applicants here in Jacksonville, at least even just in the construction management program at UNF. Okay, done deal. We'll get you started in the fall. <laughs> yeah, but we, let's, let's have a meeting. Maybe we can yeah, uh, discuss this further. Definitely, I can put my contact info in the chat bar. Perfect. Sure, that would be great if you wouldn't mind. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing so that I can see everybody. There we go. Any other questions? I just do have one I, and I need to drop off at one. So thank you for calling. I'll let Andrea wrap things up. But in terms of timing for selecting the director versus the fundraiser, have you, <clears throat> you have a plan on, you know, which comes first? Because a lot of times, you know, you ideally would get a charismatic director who's good at fundraising. But of course, if you don't know, if you don't have the funds, you can't hire that guy. So just, or, or woman or that person. So I'm just wondering if you, like what, what your plan is in terms of timing and going um, up the role. Well, the, the, the plan basically would be to get a director in place as soon as we can. Um, that, that, as you point out, that person is, that person is, Excuse me. The garbage man has arrived. <laughs> I, I apologize. Um, that uh, that that person really is instrumental in finding other funds and in growing the program. So that uh, at at City Lab we received uh, a grant from the Dr. Phillips Foundation that effectively paid the salary for the first year. And I, uh, I'm, I don't know what kind of charitable organizations might be willing to, uh, that might be willing to step up to the plate, but that's how the money was raised there. And that after we got that, it, it, it wasn't particularly easy, but we managed to uh, find the funding, funding amongst basically the whole community for uh, the, the workspaces and that kind of stuff. But the director is the first thing. January. Very good, Nancy. I just wanted to say thank you so much for bringing this to Jacksonville. Having grown up in Jacksonville my entire life and went to UF for school to become an architect and back in Jacksonville and practicing architecture, um, this is very exciting to see um, something with a little um, uh, interest in architecture coming to Jacksonville. It takes a backseat most of the times. So it's great. It's good to see you, Frida. Thanks for starting yeah, no to problem. set up that meeting for us. Thanks. Yes, no problem. Okay, we've only got a couple of minutes left here. I, uh, I, I, 
I, as usual, talked longer than I should have. Um, are there any, any final questions? Yeah, I think uh, one thing to keep in mind is the, um, the architecture and construction firms in Jacksonville are pretty well tied in together. So they'd be also probably a pretty good source to kind of loop in on, especially like fundraising. Um, and I know some people are on the call. Um, I know AIA could probably help a little bit with that, connecting contractors. Um, and also I think Rinker. Um, I mean, you guys have, in the DCP, you guys have Rinker. So maybe seeing what contacts they have to uh, get the ball rolling. Um, I can tell you this, I, I had some communication with Robert Cox, who is the d new director of Rinker, if you aren't aware of that, um, about two, in construction management, which, which they offer in, in um, Orlando, and also the possibility of developing a design build degree. Uh, but that, that would be a relatively lengthy process to do that, but they seem to be open to it. Um, and so, yes, if, they, if we can engage them in, in having an interest in, in doing something in, in the city lab here, then yes, they would be a wonderful choice for fundraising. Anybody else? Well, if you, if you have any, if you, actually, if you have any questions or you'd like to get a hold of Nancy or me, this, you can, I didn't put, I'll, I'll put my email in the chat. And I already put mine in there. And Mike, why don't you put yours in there too? Well, they probably already know you, so, okay. Yeah. I I think that we will put maybe a post on our Facebook page with an update about the fact that we had this meeting. Um, maybe we could put a couple um, overall slides up there, um, introducing the concept and have in there your guys' contact info. Mm -hmm. And um, that way everyone that wasn't able, this is a really well attended call, but um, other people could see it as well and have that uh, resource and location. Sure contact info in the future. Yeah, that would be great, Andrew. Uh, who should I send the PowerPoint to? Um, do you have Brandon's contact already? Uh, I don't know whether I do or not. I think he just set up the meeting. So if he set up the meeting, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you'll, um, yeah, he. I think he did. He's the president this year. I'll be the okay. president next year. So um, I'll put my, I'll send my contact info to you. Actually, I see your email address. And um, Brandon and I will be really happy to, you know, on behalf of the AIA Jacksonville to help support you guys in this. We, I think everyone here is really excited about the possibilities. There's a ton of unrealized potential in this city. And so it's, you know, UF isn't that far away. It's a really short little drive over there. So to confide into you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've done that. You've done that trip, right? A few times. Thousands of times. <laughs> yeah. Um, so strengthening that connection is super valuable and um, we'll be happy to support you guys with that and really appreciative of your efforts and, and, and of your presentation today. All right. Yeah, thank you very much. I thank guess, you. I guess thank with you that, whoever's in charge can end the show. Yep, uh, Brandon's out, so I'll just uh, call it for us. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Thank you for having us. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Frank. Thank, Thank you, Nancy. Okay, Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Andrea. That was awesome. Who was that? Oh, Mike? Yeah, yeah thank you. A, yeah, it's good to see you. Good to see you. I'm excited. This sounds like a really cool program, and... We need something like this here. I know I could like walk to class in the cathedral <laughs> district. It's a lot different than driving. Right? But you like driving. Well, I do. You know, I would probably still drive and then walk, you know. <laughs> hey, Mark. Hey there. Uh, hey, hey, Talia.
Hey, I was trying to, to unmute myself. How are yeah. you? I'm fine. I haven't seen your name in a while. It's nice to see your name. Yeah. I'm, thank you. Thank you. I'm still with Florida Blue. I'm not showing my face because I'm at home and I don't look appropriate at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell everyone there I said hello. That I, still I will. Love. Yes, Please I do. will. Definitely. Thank you. And Andrea, hi. Hi, Julia. How are you? Yeah, good. But I wanted to know if I would like to have more information. Do I send you my, my email or I put it here? More information on this program? Yeah. On the UF, I, you know, I think it's going to be best to reach out to Frank and to Nancy directly. Okay. So you mm. can grab their info from the chat now. And I'm mm. also grabbing their contact info. But that's why I haven't closed it out yet. I want to grab that and then have <coughs> And then we'll do a post you. on the AIA okay. Jacksonville, Florida pay, uh, okay. Facebook page okay. with some info and with their contact info. Perfect. Perfect. And then we'll Perfect. give updates because I hope, I'm hoping that we'll stay involved. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Looking forward yeah. to seeing you again once in person resumes. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, me too. It's, this is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna continue with my drawings. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. All right, thank you. All right, everyone, I'm gonna end the meeting. Thanks for joining us.